Good morning, Wildcats. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome back to a great day of learning. Another we today, a win day. Um, again, we'll have our win between 9.30 and 10.50. Uh, we will then run lunch out of our period one. And then we will go ahead and have period one, two, three, four, five, and six today. The blue day. Tomorrow, look at listen. Tomorrow is a regular white day. Okay. Yes, tomorrow, Friday, is a regular white day. Because you need to know that because you're going to need to go directly to period six tomorrow. Period six starting off straight away. And that's not something we've done here and like since we've come back, but I need to get you used to it. Period six tomorrow, period three advisory right now. We'll do announcements of period six tomorrow. We'll be fine. Uh, but make sure that we know that tomorrow that there is no anything in the morning other than regular classes. Okay, so without that, let's further ado, let's get to our announcement. All right, today is Thursday, January the 18th, 2024. All right. Don't forget, Westland Middle School is an avid school wide side of distinction. The mission of Westland Middle School is to reveal the genius of each wildcat through a culture of joy, respect, and excellence. The very person deserves to be seen, affirmed, and to grow. All right, let's get Wildcat ready, everyone. Landage and IDs are around our necks. Binders and our student organizers are with us. Backpacks, fanny packs, and purses are in our lockers. Hats, sunglasses, and hoods are off. AirPods and phones are in our lockers, and blankets stay at home. All right, like I said, today is a blue day with an advisory slash win, so we sat this all the way to 1050. We then have block one today, and so as we go through block one, uh, we have all that, and then tomorrow, again, will just be a plain um, white day with no advisory, so that'll be a schedule we run tomorrow. Just make sure you know that. Okay. Read what you love reading challenge. So I've had some eighth graders ask me, hey, Mr. Pickock, why don't we have those grade level lunches? You knew the deal back in the old reading challenge, especially when you were leading. Uh, you lead, you get three days of, of eighth grade well, grade level lunches. Sixth grade wants ice cream, seventh grade wants ice cream. You all want grade level lunches. Yeah, I can do that if you want to read the if you want to win the reading challenge. So how do we participate? All the way to February 16th, you can read books from your favorite authors about your favorite genres, topics, and characters. Do you have a favorite series? Tell a friend and let them know. And make sure you read and tell your ELA or advisory teacher um, what you rent and read at home to put those points into um, Beanstack. All right, today we do uh, finish up our wonderful PowerPoint, our presentation about the life and times of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We're going to start, remember he had just been named the youngest uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner in history of the award, and so now we're, and that was 65, so now we're in 65 again. He's arrested in Selma, Alabama during the voting rights demonstration. After President Johnson then signed the Voting Rights Law Act into law, he turned to the problems of poor blacks. So in 1966, he moved into a Chicago slum to slow the, the show, the living conditions of the poor. And then he and others began to march around against fear through the South. And then in July, in July of that year, he started a campaign to end discrimination in Chicago. Um, so then again, in 67, he had an art, another book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? Uh, the Supreme Court upheld the conviction by a Birmingham court for demonstrating without a permit, he spent four days in a Birmingham jail. And then in November 27th, he announced the creation of the Poor People's Campaign and focused on jobs and freedom for the poor of all races. In 1968, he declared the Poor People's Campaign will end in March on Washington. Uh, in the end of the March on Washington, they will demand a $12 million economic bill of rights. This would help with people who, uh, for housing and housing discrimination in that. He also marched in support of sanitation strike Strikers in Memphis, Tennessee. And on March 28th, King led a march that turned violent. This was the first time that it happened. He also gave his I've been to the mountaintop speech at this time. In 1968, on sunset on April 4th, 1968, he was shot and killed at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. His funeral on April 9th is a global event. And within a week of his assassination, the Open Housing Act is passed by Congress. So Dr. King's legacy, so on October 19th, 1983, the Senate voted to make Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, birthday a national holiday. It is the third Monday of January. Uh, the president at the time signed the bill into law on November 2nd. 
1986 was the first year to celebrate a week of concerts, church services, school activities, and parades took place in all cities across the country. It wasn't until 1993, however, that all 50 states observed the holiday. Arizona and New Hampshire were the last to celebrate the holiday. And thank you for listening to all like our timeline of this. I'll put this slide up. If you want to just go ahead and inbox me and I can send you the entire presentation uh, if you want to know more about Dr. Martin Luther King. Don't forget about our Wildcat focus is writing your student organizer every class, being on time to every class, and making your first effort, your best effort, all the time. If something's given to you, make sure you put your best effort the first time. All right, let's make sure we're cleaning up West Lane hallways, cafeterias, classrooms, and restrooms. Make sure we're washing our hands for 20 seconds. Let's make sure we're also coughing and sneezing into our sleeves to help prevent the spread of germs. Go to Honor Schools to recognize your teacher. That's honorschools.org. All right, don't forget there's zero play fighting, zero shadow boxing, zero two for flinching, and zero neck slapping here at West Lane. Uh, also, too, want to talk a bit about uh, we're not running in the hallways, too. Uh, some of us just want to run in the hallways. Also, when we're dismissing from cafeteria, if you're not back from a lunch into that class by the time that teacher hits that class there, you are tardy. And if it continues to happen, you'll be eating lunch in lunch detention or with me and then I will be walking you up or having your parents come in here and walking you up to class. Uh, B lunch is the same deal. You're going to get to that class on time to get your things, period. Pass protocol, each student gets an average of one pass a week and no passes in the first 20 minutes or last 20 minutes of class. In the cafeteria, you're sitting at your tables, correct tables, and facing the center. Stay in your seat have your ID at all times. Uh, don't forget the bell does not dismiss you from class. Your teacher does. Breakfast students, you must report directly to the cafetorium off the bus to get breakfast. And all food should be in the cafetorium. No food should be eaten outside the cafetorium or shared outside the cafetorium. Restroom privacy. Make sure you're giving all students using the restroom the appropriate privacy. This is especially, uh, this is especially true for seventh grade boys. And don't forget all cell phones are in your locker between 925 and 425. They'll be taken if they're seen or heard. And if it's the past the second time, you will be suspended from school. Don't forget our motto, Cada Wildcat, Cada Dia Mejor, which means every wildcat, every day gets better. Let's have a tremendous, 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 tremendous Thursday. Don't forget we did testing, so we're in good testing locations. Have a terrific Thursday. We'll see you around the building.